On a chilly summer's day, 28th of June, 2015, 14 youth and East students and three staff sent on an extraordinary trip to Nandi, Fiji, where we would build three homes for three families in need. Optimistic about the trip ahead, we were all anticipating a dip into the unknown, not knowing the experience of a lifetime we were all about to get into. Three hours later, we arrived at Nandi International Terminal, taking a quick 10 kilometre journey towards Salanaka Village, our home for the next six days. Just arrived at Fiji International Airport, really nice temperature here, really, and for the days ahead, look forward, to, look forward to a great trip. It was quite a cultural shock to us all, having to adjust from our normal western ways. Girls had to wear sulus to cover their legs and shorts, no hats were to be worn, and the usual, no shoes inside the house. To show off our gratitude, we were all fortunate enough to offer a card to the chieftain of the village, as well as drinking our first ever alcoholic beverage in Fiji. At 7.30 in the morning, we drove out to a poverty-strucken village in Langalanga, where we would be building for the next five days. The families of which we were building for had been severely affected by the Fijian cyclone back in 2013, and yet, it has taken two years to provide them with some vital aid. So we've just arrived in Langalanga, in a village where we'll be building our houses. We've got two houses going on and we've split into two teams. Day one today, we're starting off with shoveling the ground, digging holes to put the poles in, and then hopefully we'll get the first layer down. After the job, we were split into two teams and began the day shortly after a brief welcoming. Team Noah's Ark got off to a hot start, digging the foundation holes, sawing and cutting up the supports before lunch. On the other side, Team Sandcastle decided to take it slow. Here with my trusty uh, spade, digging a hole. Um, yeah, the nails aren't going in straight though. <laughs> At least I'm not cheating, like Sue over there. In our hammer only competition. <laughs> this is a major competition and we are gonna win. We are, you are. Aren't you? Following that, we laid down the foundation of the walls, nailing down an outer area and placing up each side of the house with corrugated iron and nails. It took us 40 minutes there and back to pick up the wall supplies, allowing my friends and I to absorb the scenery of Nandi's suburbs. Most of them were filled with worn down buildings, with a handful of people picking up scraps off the road. I've learned so much from this trip already, even in the first two days. Um, I've just experienced the community at a whole new level that I've never experienced before, and just seeing a whole different side to the lives of others that are more just unfortunately you know, placed than others, and it's pretty amazing to experience. After placing the bracing iron on each side of the walls, the roof was ready for placement the next day, so we took ourselves to the nearest beach close to our village with it becoming our own little sanctuary for after hours. The scenery was an absolute beauty, being able to see the mountains and resorts up and along the shoreline. Before we began our third day, we each distributed little gifts of clothes and school supplies to the families of the village. It was indeed a delight for both parties, showing the gift of giving and generosity to others. So I just gave away a lot of our old clothes to the village around where we're building and just feels real good to give back to them. Working in the 29 degree heat, we finalised the structure of the house by placing the roof rafters on top. At the end of the day, we placed the corrugated iron sheets on top and headed straight for the markets in the inner city. The markets were full of DIY street sellers and local convenience stores. Something quite extraordinary I found was that a lot of people have nothing going on in their mundane lives. However, the spirits inside the community are very much alive and people alike find ways to brighten up even the poorest of souls, something that I believe Kiwis dearly need to show within the wider community. Sunset at 6pm was breathtaking, taking another dip into our little sanctuary and spending the night on the beach. By the fourth day, we drilled down the corrugated roof, placed in the windows and door, and finally, strapping on the top hole to complete Noah's Ark. It was an incredibly rewarding experience that will no doubt apply for our futures and our CVs. Taking the afternoon off, we went back to the village for a visit to the local primary school. Established in 2011, the school has about 85 children 
aged 5 to 11. Unlike any other primary, we were welcomed with the traditional Fijian way, each receiving a lei and a waiata performed from the class. We spent the afternoon playing outside, teaching them games, sports, which brought an everlasting smile to each and every child in the class. All these kids seem to have an undying passion for learning and playing around, which shows just how much they appreciate receiving a decent education, something we take for granted so easily back home. On Saturday morning, we officially handed over our beloved homes to the families, naming them Noah's Ark and Family First. It brought tears to our eyes to see what we had accomplished and how much these families valued such little sacrifice we gave up to build these shelters for them. These homes will always be a part of us and we know it's just a small step towards bringing them a brighter future. Whatever has been done for the last three days. The following day, having been at the markets and watching the Nandi Fiji Rugby Club put on a dazzling performance win over Namosi, we were invited to the village's traditional Sunday church service. Like our chapel, it has a big cross at the back and is filled with rows and rows of pews. Although we had no idea what the sermon was saying most of the time, it was quite a thrilling experience to see how religious the community is and what having the faith is really all about. That afternoon, it was time to say goodbye to our little friends and families, sending off to enjoy the last few days of relaxation before heading back home to Auckland. So we're just about to leave Sumatra Village after being here for seven days. It's been a really great experience being here with all the kids and spending time with all the people and learning about the culture and the food and all that stuff. So it'll be really sad to go. And yeah, hopefully we can come back again. Yeah, it's been a really great experience. It was an emotional time for all of us, seeing how quickly we had become locals to the village, sharing a bond between each child and the family that welcomed us into their humble home. We received our certificates and were thanked on behalf of the family. On behalf of the staff members, I'd really like to thank you people because you've made our jobs really easy for the family. So um, thank you all. But again, thank you to our lovely family, our extended family now, through those doors there. Thank you very much. We left Salnaka with heavy hearts, knowing that it will be a long time before we see such a beautiful place again. To summarise the trip, we gave a little to get a lot. Although we missed having our own bathrooms, beds, homes, social network, and even our personal comforts, none of that really mattered. The camaraderie, the bonds of friendship, the true happiness that the children of the village brought us each and every day. We build a connection that will always be with us, with ourselves, each other, and the locals. Personally, the culture impact that such an opportunity has given me has been something that will always be part of my conscience. These poverty-strucken villages have nothing, but yet, reality shows that these people have nothing but happiness and virtue towards their growing lives. And thus we must prosper in the endless opportunities we have here in Western society and attending such a prestigious school. If there was one word of advice that each and every one of you watching this video should remember, it is. It only takes a little to see exactly what the true definition of living and fulfilling life is. So always surprise yourself, and that way you can see what life truly has to offer. Please, I encourage you to um, put your name forward and get across to Fiji.